What's up guys, my name is Julian, your solar expert, and today I have two whiteboards, but more on the second board later. I'm gonna be explaining everything you need to know as simply as possible about how to know which panels are really good and which ones are not that good. I get questions all the time from people that really indicate that they need help just understanding some basic concepts about the panels, and so I'm gonna be explaining the efficiencies, the NMOT ratings, the temperature coefficient, and the degradation as simply as possible so you understand for yourself how to know if a panel is good or not. Okay, so let's get started here. So the efficiency is the number one most important rating that you need to kind of understand. And the general rule of thumb is anything over 20% is gonna be considered really good. Anything under 20%, kind of mediocre nowadays. Um, there are some panels that are gonna be even over 21%, even over 22%, and those are gonna be your super premium modules. So pretty much is gonna tell you what percent of the light that's hitting the panel is being converted to electricity. 20% or so doesn't really seem very high, but that's actually pretty good for uh, photovoltaic technology. So uh, some panels, you know, like the Panasonic and the RECs and the Sun Powers, those are gonna be your most efficient panels on the market. And those are kind of the three that win that category. Um, now the NMOT rating, um, I have a whole nother video that I, I uh, made last year that explains this in more detail, but basically the NMOT rating is the, the real world watt output. When we see like the watt rating, you know, that's actually just gonna be your standard test condition rating, which is in a room temperature environment. And you know, you have a big bulb in front of the panel and it, it, it's, it's in a controlled environment. So the NMOT rating is actually a little bit of a better uh, number to go off of and especially people get confused about you know why the panel is rated so much higher than like what their inverter can output and this is actually what we're pairing you know the two products together with so the closer the NMOT is to the standard test condition rating that's that can kind of be an indicator for a higher quality panel so the temperature coefficient is a, a main factor for how there's a different number between the STC and the NMOT. The, the temperature coefficient is gonna tell us how well the panel does as it gets into hotter and hotter temperatures. The, the watt rating that you see, you know, right on the, on the label there, that is when the panel is in a room temperature environment and in a perfect environment to output the most it could possibly uh, output. And when it's on your roof, hot, in the sun getting beaten all day. You know, think of like a computer when it gets hot, it needs the fans to cool down. Solar panels are the same way. They, they, if they get too hot, they're not gonna perform as well. So certain panels perform better in, in the heat. And so that's a big differentiator for, you know, a, a more premium panel versus kind of a more middle of the road panel. It's how well is it really gonna produce when it gets hot up on your roof? You think solar panels wanna be hot, obviously, because they're converting light to electricity, but they don't actually want to be hot. The theoretically, if you have like a 40 degree day and it's super sunny, like a, like a bluebird day, you know, out on the slopes like that, that's actually a perfect environment for a solar panel to produce really, really uh, quite a lot of power. So the temperature coefficient actually tells us for every degree outside of its uh, ideal temperature range, which is usually around 40 to 44 degrees Celsius, as you can see in the chart, um, there's going to be a percent drop off for every temperature base or for every degree uh, beyond that. So, the temperature coefficient leader here is REC and Panasonic. Um, so, if you're in a really hot environment, Southern California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, you know anywhere where it's like pretty much over 80 degrees in the summertime, the panels on your roof, they're cooking. They're like well into the hundreds at that point. And so the, the, the panels kind of down here, the, the, the lower quality panels that I have listed, they get bogged down more in, in the heat. So it's an important spec to kind of understand the temperature coefficient because a lot of people don't really talk about it. Um, but a lower temperature coefficient number is better. So higher is not better in this case. You want the lower number. Now, degradation tells us how well over time uh, the panel is going to perform. Uh, it used to be, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, to get a panel that only uh, degraded less than 10% uh, in 25 years was impossible. But now, actually, we have our, our top premium products degrading less than 10% uh, throughout a 25-year period, uh, which is pretty amazing, actually. So 
Uh, the REC, Panasonic, and SunPower panels are gonna have the least degradation overall. And uh, it's a 92% guarantee at year 25, which is pretty amazing. Um, Q-Cells is another uh, good quality product in terms of degradation. It's about a 14% degradation over 25 years. Um, Q-Cells out of like the, the mid-tier panels is gonna be my, my favorite personally. They've, they're a big company, they've been around a long time. Um, now, in terms of the, the warranty, if it has a labor warranty or not in the last column, um, most products do not, and, and normally you need um, a special relationship between the installer and the manufacturer in order to have a labor warranty because the manufacturers are oftentimes, you know, they're worried that, you know, once the, the panel leaves the, the, the pallet, you know, the installers can damage it and then, you know, later the homeowners are coming after the manufacturers and it, it wasn't their fault, the installers broke it. So usually you have to have a, a quality installer that is uh, in like a, a network or a preferred installer network. But if you do, with certain panels, they give you labor warranties, uh, so you wouldn't have to come out of pocket um, you know, to pay the contractor. Um, for example, REC, Panasonic, SunPower, those are, those are three products that actually have uh, the labor warranty built in. So if you kind of understand efficiency, NMOT, temp coefficient, and degradation, you're gonna be able to kind of look at the spec sheet yourself and easily know uh, if a panel is really good or not. So, okay, so how do we tie all these numbers together and understand out of all these panels I've listed here, which one is actually the best? All right, off to uh, whiteboard two. All right, so, <laughs> okay, so after looking at all these specs, how do you kind of tie it all together and make sense of it and, and, and kind of Confirm for yourself which panel is best for you. Okay, so there's one spec or, or factor that we didn't consider on the first board, which is the dimensions and the total area. Now, a, a trend that is happening right now in the solar industry is instead of making the panels more efficient and actually more power dense or able to you know, output more power on a square foot basis, they're just making the panels bigger. They're adding more cells, uh, you know, and, and there's, they're making the panel bigger basically, and so there's more surface area, and so the overall wattage is bigger. So what I've done here is I've drawn out all the dimensions and uh, figured out the square inches for each panel, and then I've taken the NMOT, and what I've done is I've divided the uh, NMOT by the area, and we come out with a true performance per square foot rating and that'll tell us really at the end of the day when we you know factor all these specs which one is actually going to produce the most power so i actually already labeled it here uh, there's a star next to both of them and i, I found this really interesting because i hadn't actually uh i didn't know this until i did the calculation but there's a new rec panel coming up the 430 it's being talked about quite a lot um, i hear a lot of questions on it and it's a different shape. So the panel is wider. Um, and as you can see here, like for example, the 400, it's 71 inches tall by uh, 38 inches uh, wide. And the new one is 68 inches uh, tall by 42 inches wide. And so as you can see, basically it's a little shorter and wider. Um, and the cells are basically being turned. They, they've figured out a way to do the wiring different, which they claim is more efficient. But I took the NMOT rating for both the existing Ford, uh, Panasonic 410, which is actually a rebranded REC Alpha Series, so it's, it's the same panel, just with a different sticker on it, and I compared the 410 to the new 430 coming out, and if you break it down, by the NMOT rating at least, on a per square inch basis, the existing Panasonic 410 is by 0.1 watt, is, is actually outputting slightly more power than the new REC coming out. So I have to find out more information on this and kind of come, come up with an explanation, but I found that very interesting. But basically to sum it up, if you look at all these panels, you're gonna see that the REC and the Panasonic actually are gonna give you the most power. Now, uh, next to my uh, sun power, I have a, a question mark. I would love to give you a, a rating for the SunPower panel, but unfortunately SunPower, for whatever reason, you know, they like to claim that they're the best, but they actually are not telling us uh, what the NMOT rating of their product is. Um, I don't know if they are trying to keep it a secret. Most manufacturers are gonna easily give us all the information. Um, the Q-Cell product overall 
it is a solid product. As you can see, it's not the most efficient product on the market, but it is a very high quality module um, with overall very good specs for the money. Um, Q-Cells is actually the largest in terms of overall market share on this entire list. Also, something to note here is I did put the Tesla panel down here, but what a lot of people don't know is that the Tesla panel is actually a rebranded Q-Cell 400. Uh, Tesla doesn't actually manufacture um, any solar panels or inverters. They, they do manufacture the batteries, but also about 75% of the lithium in a Tesla battery is actually a pan is Panasonic. Since there's so much to talk about and explain here, if you need more information or you want me to dive in deeper to one of these topics, just give me a call 760-473-5878. I'll help you out with your solar project. I work in most of the United States. Um, I don't have every state covered, but chances are if you're interested in solar, I can help you out. Um, and uh, I have a lot of these options available as well. So um, different price points for different panels and uh, I can go over the different options with you and kind of help you figure out which one is best for you in your specific case. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about each panel and just kind of give you a little bit more detailed information about each one, uh, not relating to the, the specs specifically. Okay, so the REC Alpha Series, REC has been around since 1996, one of the leaders in actually manufacturing solar panels. And uh, they actually have a, a contract with Panasonic. Panasonic is having uh, REC sub-manufacture their panels for them because they're so good. Um, while Panasonic focuses on um, R&D for battery technology development since that's the way that the market is going. But the Alpha Series has been out on the market now for about three years and I've been actively selling it for three years. It's been a great product. I've literally never even seen one fail and uh, it's fantastic. I really recommend it. Um, the, the new one, the 430 that's coming out, I'm excited to see in reality how well it performs. I talked to one of the engineers at the Anaheim convention, the solar convention RE Plus this year, and he said that the, the difference is in the wiring and how they turned the cells on the side. Um, kind of a unique innovation, um, but we'll see how it really performs in the real world. Um, now, the Panasonic Evervolt is actually a rebranded, um, like I said, REC Alpha Series. So that's technically the product that you're getting. And I put the 410 and also the, the 360 in here. The 360 um, is a lot smaller. It's a, it's a 60 cell module versus the 410 being a 66. So it's about, you know, if you look at the dimensions of the, at the same width, but 66 inches obviously requires more height. And so that's where the, uh, the, the watt gain is coming from. If you are to take the 360 watt rating and you add 10%, that's 36 watts, so that'd be 396 that you would get up to if you were to make it the same size. So that gives you a true actual size to size comparison. Um, now, Q-Cells is actually the leading, um, they're the leader in market share for residential solar. They offer overall the, the best, I would say, bang for your buck in terms of quality, price point, um, performance. So it's gonna be what a lot of contractors like to buy because they can get really good deals on them. Um, certain contractors, you know, like the ones a lot of the ones that I like to work with, they have you know a little bit more of a premium mindset and they, they like to use like top of the line, top of the line products. But Q-Cells, it's a really great product. I've sold them for years. Um, I, I trust Q-Cells just as much as um, the other manufacturers, but know that the performance is gonna be a little bit lower than you know some of these top premium options. Um, the the Q-Cells 480 down here, I just put that in there because it's a, it's a bigger panel. It's a silver framed, mostly for commercial application, but every once in a while when a customer is just super price oriented and they just want the best bang for their buck and they don't really care too much about you know having that, like that all black aesthetic look, um, the 480 Q-Cell, if you can get it, it it's a good option. Um, the, the quality of the cells and everything, it's the same as the 400. So um, quality wise, it's fine. It just doesn't really look as pretty. Um, with, with Sun Power, you know, what I'm gonna say is probably pretty controversial because they do all their marketing and pretty much try to position themselves as like the industry leader, best of the best. You know, they have like this outrageous sales pitch basically telling you like, that their panels are on the NASA, you know, space station and all that, like, okay, that's great. But the panels they sell are, are not what is on the NASA space station. And SunPower in the last several years has kind of had a lot of issues. Um, they split their company into two. The manufacturing is, is now being done by Maxion. So it's not really a SunPower uh, product, technically speaking. Um, and then next year, I was talking to the SunPower rep at the RE Plus Anaheim convention event. 
Um, and the panel coming out next year that SunPower is gonna be white labeling is actually made by First Solar, which is a manufacturer that's been in the game for a really long time, but they've really focused on commercial. And so they're, they're, they're creating a, a new product for SunPower that is coming out, I wanna say in 20, late 2023 or early 2024. And that's, that's actually gonna be SunPower's new product. So that's actually made by First Solar, which is a whole nother company that has never been connected with SunPower until just recently. So I'm not really exactly sure um, what's going on in the long term with SunPower. I don't think they're gonna be the king of solar like they claim they have been over the last few years in the future. Overall, quality wise, their hardware is really great. They use the Enphase microinverters in their AC panels. So that's really what you're getting. Although I do believe it's still the, the IQ7, it's not the new eight. They don't have like a licensing for that um, yet or something. So it's, it's the older technology, it's something to know. Now, as, in terms of Silfab, they're pretty popular in terms of like a budget option. You know, they have like the North American made kind of like sales pitch going for them. Um, in reality, all the, all the cells, they're coming from overseas and made means just assembled. So some of these panels are, they say made in America, it just means assembled. But Silfap is one of them. They have a, a, an assembly plant up in, I believe it's Bellingham, Washington. And they may overall, overall they make a good panel. It's not like the greatest panel or anything, but it, it looks good. If you get a great deal on them, I would say go for it. But if you can get something better, I would say go for that. Um, Canadian Solar, um, they've been around a long time as well. Um, overall, they make like a mid-tier product, um, reliable and good quality, but the, the cells are gonna, you know, just maybe not be quite as efficient, not have the best degradation. Um, very close, but just they're, they're not buying the, the, the best um, cell technology to put in their panels, basically. Uh, Mission Solar, they're uh, out of Texas. Um, their panels are pretty tough. They have like good snow and wind load ratings and everything and their marketing is more geared towards how tough they are, you know, like with hail storms in Texas and such. Um, overall, they make a good quality product. Good sells, not necessarily the greatest sells, but a good reliable company. Um, and then um, Tesla, I put down here in Q, Q cells in, in parentheses and um, Tesla doesn't actually make a panel. They just rebrand the Q cells. Um, so um, it's, it, that's what you're getting if you have a Tesla quote for the, the 400 watt, it's just the, the G10 Q-Cell Duo, um, which is a good panel. But something to know about the Tesla uh, systems as a side note is that they use a centralized inverter. Um, you, if, if possible, you want to use a microinverter, spe specifically by Enphase if you can get that, because um, that's going to be your by far best microinverter on the market. Thank you so much, guys. I really hope that this video helped you understand how to know which solar panels are best uh, on the market right now. Give me a call at 760-473-5878. I'll help you out and we'll go over your project uh, specifically and figure out what the best solution is for you.